Sibel Edmonds joined the FBI in the wake of 9-11 as a Turkish language translator. During her time there, she uncovered information pointing to foreign spy networks, nuclear intrigue, and FBI managers who had deliberately obstructed 9-11 intelligence ahead of the attacks. She was fired after reporting this information to FBI management. What followed was a 10-year ordeal where Edmonds was hounded by the Justice Department, stripped of her First Amendment rights, and introduced to the murky world of the whistleblower, navigating the pitfalls of establishment attacks and the phony opposition that is not what it appears to be. This is the GRTV feature interview with your host James Corbett and our special guest, Sibel Edmonds. My case actually is a classic example of a government whistleblower following the so-called channels, doing what the system the, the system tells them to do. That's what I did. So when I came across and I found wrongdoings, including um, the, the reports, the evidence, the documents, the witnesses, what I did with that was what I was told uh, I should be doing. And that was... I went to my superiors. Nothing happened. In fact, I was retaliated against. Then I went to the higher ups. I went to this office called within the FBI, the Office of Professional Responsibility, OPR, and I gave my report to them. They were prevented from investigating it and they told me to take it to the Justice Department, one layer higher, to the Inspector General's office, which I did. And again, when nothing happened, I went to the Congress, that is the next step. Now for the Justice Department and FBI uh, employees and, and, and workers, the, uh, the appropriate committees for, for reporting wrongdoing is the Judiciary Committee or the Intelligence Committee. So I did that and I exhausted that channel. Then they said, well, there is one more channel left for you to pursue and that is taking your case to courts. Well, you can't as a whistleblower take your case to, to any court. You have to take your case to a federal court, to federal judges. Now, uh, again, mo many don't uh, understand the implications of that. When you're an employee of FBI or the CIA or the Defense Department, the laws, the Constitution, the rights don't apply to you. You can't, for example, have jury, trial by jury. Meaning the federal judge has to decide on your case. You have to present your case to the federal judge. If you're lucky as a whistleblower and you can dish out $350, $400 per hour, and trust me, those hours, they add up very, very quickly. And I can tell you this much, based on my experience with hundreds of whistleblowers, over 90% of the whistleblowers can't afford that. They have already lost their jobs or about to lose their jobs, they have families to support, they can't go and give the $350 per hour and spend tens of thousands of dollars to represent their case in court. So that option actually is not available in reality to the whistleblowers. And even when you have the money, you'd be surprised to know how many private attorneys do not want to have anything to do with FBI or CIA related cases. I went to several law firms and I said, okay, I'll give your $350 per hour. They said, uh, we really don't want to mess with the FBI. It's the FBI. And we all have our skeletons in our closets. We all have our businesses and maybe things that are not exactly stellar. We don't want to mess with the FBI. And they just told me straightforward, we won't take your case because we don't want to deal with the FBI. We don't want to deal with the CIA. And on top of that, if you are with these intelligence agencies, you have another battle, which nobody has won, and that's the battle of secrecy because it's the government and your agency that tells you, well, you can't present this evidence. It's secret. We consider it classified. You cannot present this issue or topic in court before the judge or even to the media. We consider it classified. We decide what is classified, what is not classified. Therefore, there, there is no way to blow the whistle when you work for government agencies, especially for these really important agencies such as the FBI and the Pentagon and the CIA. 
Well, that's that's exactly right. I mean, these are the the most critical functions that the government has, and and to the fact that they're suppressing uh, whistleblowing from inside is is really, I mean, incredibly worrying to anyone who has any understanding of what the, these agencies are designed to do. And and for those people who aren't familiar with what your position was there or what the nature of the information that you were attempting to blow the whistle on, perhaps you can bring people up to speed on that. Sure. My, my reports had several uh, categories of uh, wrongdoing reports, or in some cases, criminal cases. Uh, part of it had to do with the penetration of the FBI by individuals who actually worked for and with the FBI's targets of investigations, um, foreign organizations and entities that were engaged in narcotics dealings in the United States, bringing in narcotics. And, and then part of it had to do with uh, appointed U.S. officials in agencies such as the State Department, uh, Pentagon, specifically nuclear labs uh, in uh, certain Air Force bases uh, across the country, people who were dealing information for money and these are nuclear and weapons related uh, secrets that the U.S. had and they were giving it basically to the highest bidders, these foreign entities. So it, it, it had several elements. Uh, part of it dealt with the cover-up of certain 9-11 related information. Um, one of my uh, investigation files that I worked with a counterintelligence agent, agent, special agent, dealt with um, operations uh, of, of FBI targets between 1996 and 2001. And these targets simultaneously were working with the State Department and the CIA overseas in, in, in bringing about terrors in certain um, areas. Uh, for example, and I have said this, the government has said this is a state secret privilege and people, they say, well, why doesn't she talk? Well, I have said that. I've said between 1996 and 2001, many of the top Chechen related terrorism were directly supported by our own government and their operatives, agents, both foreign and also domestic here. We actually helped Chechen groups for five years directly to blow up people, to, to, to kidnap people, to kill people. We had direct, not indirect support, direct. So these were the kinds of things that it contained. So I took this information, and as I mentioned before, I took it through all these appropriate channels. And nothing happened. And, uh, and I lost in every single one of those steps. I went all the way to the Supreme Court and they would not hear the case, not because of its merits, because the government said it is state secrets privilege. Everything about this woman, Savelle Edmonds, is secret classified, including her birthplace and the languages she performed translation for us. So that was the course. With Congress, uh, that's another interesting thing. First of all, we haven't seen a single case where Congress truly really helps a whistleblower, government whistleblower, and has hearing. It hasn't happened, really. Um, and in some cases that you have quasi-hearings or quasi-actions, it's when your issue that you report has partisan quality in it. For example, during the Bush administration, if my case only dealt with George Bush administration's criminal wrongdoing cover-up issues, then I would have believed, I believe I would have received more support. But when I went to these offices, I had to tell the truth and say, well, these cases involve two administrations because they started in 1996, went on until 2002, Clinton administration and the Bush administration. And that is a no-no flag. That's when neither party wants to use your case to go after another party. So that was another defeating uh, element in my case. It was not a partisan case. It is not a partisan case. And as far as the government agencies' so-called channels uh, go, the inspector general, after dragging their foot for, for more than two years, they issued the report and they classified over 90% of their report. They said, here is a 10% declassified version. And it said I was right and that my claims, my allegations were supported by other witnesses and documents. And 
in the end, it didn't mean anything. So even the department's own inspector general put out a report and said, she's right. We can't tell you what she, she was reporting, but she was right. So Congress had that, FBI had it, and nothing happened. It basically, in the end, proves that there are no ch channels. It's futile. If you want to report wrongdoing, if you believe the American people needs to know whether uh, in their name uh, criminal actions are taking place or, or there's government waste, fraud, abuse involving their tax dollars, people need to find a way to put that information out directly into the public.